Hello, this is Reverend Angelia with today's Bible reading. Uh, this computer is giving me troubles. I was on the other one, and I came back to this one because I thought it had been on long enough to act right, but <laughs> if it cuts off, I don't even know. Um, now, you may have noticed some things changed in my Bible reading. We left off before in Revelation, and now I'm back in Matthew. And I had kind of a thought um, it may have been divinely inspired, I don't know. But um, a lot of preachers go through the Bible in a year or whatever um, and talk about the different things. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, we're in this in church now. And, you know, um, I've actually had people say, you know, I'll come when there's something more interesting going on. I talk with another person and when we're into something more interesting, I'll, I'll start coming again. And I just thought about that. And Revelation is one of those things that's hard for a lot of people to understand. They're like, what are they? What is he talking about? I don't even get it. I don't even know. There could be nothing like that going on, you know, but there probably will be. Uh, but anyway, um, I thought at this stage of my life, it would be important. I tell everyone, get them a red letter edition. And uh, I feel like it might be important for uh, me and for us at this age to... Uh, Focus on our red letters, because that's what really matters in this Bible. I mean, you can look at the Ten Commandments, uh, Psalms, um, Proverbs, whatever you want to in the Old Testament. But Jesus came to bring us the New Testament. Um, and I've found in studying the Bible all these years, um, since I was 13, um, that uh, some of the things the apostles even put out there is not exactly gel with what Jesus put out there. So I've decided that basically my ministries, as far as the Bible reading goes, has become a red letter edition ministry that all that's important in our lives is what Jesus had to say, not what happened in the Old Testament, because that's the Old Testament, not what his apostles did uh, or didn't do, not what others in the world did or didn't do and what happened. Yes, there are lessons to take from that. It's good historical reading. I recommend you read all the Bible. But what I'm going to start focusing on is what Jesus had to say. Because I think that will help a lot of people. And that's what's most relevant in this day and age. So, back to Matthew chapter 4. Let me adjust my self here. I'm a little too, a little too uh, low here. Uh, the temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Um, let me make sure. I had this turned down one day. Let me make sure my uh, volume is right and in, in, in that you can hear me. <laughs> After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. I mean, could any of us do that fast 40 days and 40 nights? Doubtful. The tempter came to him and said, now, who is the tempter? It's the devil. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. And they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. See what he did there? Uh, Jesus said, it is written. He pulled out some scripture for him. So then the devil, he pulls out some scripture too. You know, so you got to watch out. That guy's tricky. And he will get you wherever he can. Jesus answered him, it is also written. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. 
And uh, how many people, I've heard people do that. Well, God, if you want this to happen, you make this happen. Well, God, if you want me to do this, you make, make this happen. You know, you're not supposed to put God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All of this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. And why could the devil even assume that he could give him all this? Because he ruled this, this world. He's in charge down here. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan. Um, <laughs> all right. I have a big pop-up right here in the way. <laughs> For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Him only. Then the devil left him because he realized he wasn't getting aware with Jesus. And angels came and attended him. So that's all Jesus had to do. Is stay strong. Keep his faith. And when the devil offered him everything in the world, all he'd do is say, no, I'm not going to worship you. I worship God and he's the only one. And then he passed that test and the angels came and brought him food and drink and whatever else he needed, I imagine. So that's a lesson in faith. And standing in faith. Things might not be happening the way you want them to happen. They might not happen in the timeline you want them to happen. But if you have faith, God will show you his goodness. And that's all for now. Until next time.